Hi everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia and PC Audio Labs, and I'm giving you a look today at the Presonus Fader Port 8 USB Automation and Transport Controller. Uh, this is the evolution of the Presonus Fader Port. I myself have had a Fader Port for going on maybe eight years or something along those lines, and it's always been an incredibly useful tool in my own studio, allowing me to have a single motorized fader which I can use to take control of Studio One and other digital audio workstations. The Fader Port 8 takes this to the next level and gives you eight faders uh, as well as a slew of other controls built in and of course great integration with Persona Studio One. And the Fader Port 8 will actually come with uh, the artist version of Studio One version 3, which is pretty awesome. So uh, I'll just give you guys a quick look at the packaging. You saw the front, here's the back. And um, let's go over some quick features here. Automation buttons will let you quickly change between latch, trim, and touch modes while writing automation. So that's super useful for those of you who like to throw your channel strips into one of those automation modes, grab your faders and move them. You can do that uh, in real time on the Fader Port 8. You can arm all your tracks, clear your mutes, clear your solos with a single button press, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, Studio One controls that are exclusive to Studio One let you control any parameter under your mouse, uh, open custom macros, and do A-B auditioning of plugins and effects chains. So that's also incredibly useful just to speed up your workflow. Uh, touch sensitive faders, of course, as I was saying, these are motorized touch sensitive faders. They let you control level panning, bus sends, plug in parameters, features such as that. So all these motorized faders, which we'll be looking at in just a moment here. You can manage your DAW's console to view only the channels and buses you're currently working with. So that is very useful again as a workflow feature because you're only going to focus on what you're currently working on at that time. And then there is a session navigator that provides quick control over track, uh, bank, and timeline scrolling, plus horizontal and vertical zoom, click track, marker navigation, and constant master fader control. A lot of really cool features. Let's crack it open and take a look. So here is the fader port 8 completely unpacked. And you can see we have our 8 faders. These feel really smooth. I've always loved the way that Personas faders feel. They're just, they're smooth and easy to use. They don't have a lot of pushback, but there's just enough, even when they're not motorized, because the unit's not powered on right now, just enough that I can be really smooth with my movements, but not too little that they flip up by themselves or anything like that. That's pretty important to me. Um, at the top, we have scribble strips right here, and we'll see those in action in a moment a pan and parameter knob for controlling obviously panning and various other parameters. The arm all button, great of course for arming all of your tracks for recording really quickly. Solo clear, mute clear, bypass, uh, macro and link buttons. These also are, have secondary features via the shift button right here um, for doing lock, open and all controls. Select buttons, of course that's going to focus on that specific uh, channel strip when you select the select option. Mute and solo on each of those channel strips right there. Going down the right hand side we have track, edit plugin, sends and pan allowing us to jump between the different modes. Uh, audio, virtual instrument, bus, VCA, all, and then shift for each of these giving inputs, MIDI, outputs, FX, and user controls. And then moving over to the far right we have our automation controls, latch, trim, off, touch, right, read, we have our selection knob here, allowing us to make various selections as well as previous and next for uh, allowing us to press a button to jump back and forth instead of using the knob. Then we have channel master, zoom click, scroll section, bank, and marker. And all of these are going to allow us to jump between the different features and controls inside of Studio One. Finally, we have our transport controls, nice big play button, stop, record, uh, rewind and fast forward as well as return to zero when both of those are pressed and loop controls. It's very light. It's going to fit really nicely on a desktop, tabletop, whatever it is that you happen to work on. So I'm definitely uh, really loving the overall form factor of the Fader Port 8. 
It's uh, it's slim. It looks really nice. It's going to look great with the rest of your gear, of course. It's going to pair really nicely with other Personas gear, such as Studio Live consoles uh, and keyboards, audio interfaces, things along those lines. Let's power it on so that you guys can see it. I'm going to need to kill down my studio lights so that you can see what's actually happening on the interface a little bit. Now then, as a quick point of reference, I am using a PC Audio Labs Pro Audio laptop, my own PCAL Pro Audio laptop, uh, which I use for production and DJing. I'm running the latest version of Studio One version 3 on that. You'll want that because that's how you're going to get uh, immediate communication with the fader port. Let's uh, take a look at the fader port. Now I've turned off again some of my studio lights here just so you can see a little more some of the lights that are on uh, the fader port 8. Might be a little bit hard to see but this will at least give you a basic idea. I'm going to open up a session on Studio One on my PCAL laptop and boom there you go all my faders immediately match up to where my tracks are. Now you can see all my tracks right now are currently at um, they're at standard uh, zero decibel level. I could change this if I wanted. This is just a test session. But uh, if I grab and move any of these faders, <clears throat> we will see that the faders all move in tandem with my session in Studio One. Additionally, if I grab a fader in Studio One, my motorized fader is going to follow along with it. So everything is going to stay in time and stay together, uh, which is one of the, the major features that you're going to see here is, you know, workflow is going to be streamlined because of the fact that you're going to basically have everything happening on the fader port 8 that you have happening inside of Studio One. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth here into all of the various controls because there is a lot to cover, but I just want to be able to show you guys how this in general works. Uh, if I hit play, of course, I'll get playback. And I can also, of course, I can fast forward and I can rewind. And right now I'm actually at the very, very end of all the audio that I have in the session. So I can use return to zero by pressing both the fast forward and rewind buttons to go backwards. And then I can use that button to go backwards or forwards if I want to. I have record to start recording and of course playback and looping. So all of this is really useful for allowing me to be able to get quick access to all of the controls for all of my tracks inside of Studio One. All I need to do to focus on a new track is simply press select and when I do that that track will be highlighted inside of Studio One. And of course uh, I can mute and I can solo any of those tracks. I can also change the pan settings for each track by simply selecting it and then adjusting its pan levels. And as I was talking about earlier, I have access to all of those various automation modes allowing me to use latch, touch, write, and etc. And finally to throw those uh, channel strips into read mode. And I can also disable automation if I want to disable it on the fly. My scribble strips at the, at the top will give me a readout of the name of my tracks and what number track it is that I currently have selected. And let's say that I were to add a new track. I'm going to add just one audio track and this will go at the end here. Uh, you'll see that my tracks will match up with whatever new tracks it is that I happen to add. So I'm able to just really easily jump back and forth. Now the other thing you're going to be wondering about is, well, how do I navigate across multiple tracks? So let's go ahead and add uh, a larger number of tracks right now. I'm going to add six new tracks and I'll add those. So I have six tracks now. I haven't named these or anything like that, but I can navigate back and forth very easily. And you can see I'm banking right now. So this is what we generally, this is what we would refer to on controllers as banking. I'm jumping back and forth between different banks of tracks. And I do, of course, have control over my main fader as well once I get to the end of my bank of tracks. So it makes it very easy to jump back and forth. The scribble strips are backlit, which is great. So it's going to be easy to use this in low light situations. Sometimes it's nice to mix in the dark, as it were. And it's very easy to see what it is that I'm focused on, again, because I can simply use that select button. And everything that is at my fingertips is backlit. So it's really easy for me to be able to utilize shift controls, other various controls on the fader port 
port in order to get some work done. And of course, it's just really useful to be able to so easily grab on to any of my tracks and just immediately get active uh, on those tracks and start my mix. So overall, as you can see, the Fader Port 8 is a incredibly easy to use uh, device. I should also mention that setup of the Fader Port 8 is super easy. Uh, you're going to want to install Universal Control from Personas and Universal Control is going to allow you to update the firmware on the Fader Port 8 and that's important just because that'll add new features, fix bugs, things like that from time to time. So Universal Control allows you to do that. However, you don't necessarily need to even install Universal Control. The device is class compliant, so basically you just need to plug it in. And I found that when I plugged it into my laptop and made sure that I had the latest version of Studio One up and running on my system, immediately the fader port was seen in my devices setup inside of Studio One. And I'll just show that to you real quick. I'll go to Options. And the fader port 8 was immediately seen in my setup. I didn't even need to set it up, which was really great. And so as a result, uh, everything was just ready to go right out of the box and of course I open up a session and immediately the fader port sees what's happening the faders wake up and I can get to mixing right off the bat so not a whole lot of uh, complex operation here which is one of the absolute coolest features about uh, the fader port 8 there's one other thing that I should mention and that is that uh, if you want to change the mode that the fader port is working in you can do that and uh, I'll show you how to do that real quickly and so right now my fader port is not connected to Studio One. It is connected to my PCAL Pro Audio laptop, but it's not connected to Studio One. Let's say that I wanted to change the mode that it operates in because it's got different modes. Uh, there is a mode that directly is going to interact with and work with Studio One, but if you wanted to maybe not use the fader port with Studio One, you wanted to use it with another digital audio workstation, hold down the first two select buttons, press the power button on. Keep holding those down and then what you're going to see on those scribble strips is going to be uh, the option to select Studio One mode, MCU mode or Mackie control or Huey mode. And there's also a setup for the device as well. This will also tell you what version of the firmware is on the fader port, subversion, other various pieces of information that are very useful, and then finally exit. So if I wanted to change to uh, Mackie control or Huey mode, Mackie control is really useful for other digital audio workstations, Cubase and etc. Huey is very specific to Pro Tools. If I wanted to change those modes, I would simply press the select button underneath that mode I want to change and then hit select underneath the exit scribble strip. That'll exit restart the fader port and then I would be able to connect the fader port to whichever device it were that I wanted uh, whichever digital audio workstation it was that I wanted to connect the fader port to so it makes it super easy to use the fader port uh, with other audio workstations as well so keep in mind the fader port is not only for studio one it's going to work great with other digital audio workstations uh, which is going to be useful for those of you out there who are looking for a production controller for uh, other uh, audio workstations I myself really do love Studio One and I love the integration between Personas hardware and Personas software. It's all really seamless and it works really, really easily. So uh, as you can see, guys, there's a lot of features here. There are a lot of things that you can take control of with the fader port in your session in Studio One and other digital audio workstations. You'll want to experiment with it, but overall, it's a very straightforward device. It's really super easy to use. And the best thing about it is that with those eight faders at your fingertips, it just makes mixing super easy. And it's going to help a lot of you out there who, again, like I say, focus very heavily on automation and like to do automation on the fly. It is incredibly useful when doing automation on the fly to be able to simply grab a fader and move it instead of having to use your mouse and draw automation manually and all these other kinds of things that get a little bit tedious when you're in the process of mixing, especially a lot of tracks. And like I say, have no fear, you are not relegated to only the eight faders that you have here. As you add more tracks, you can just simply bank left, bank right in order to see all of your tracks, focus on them, take control of them, makes it super easy to control your session. So there you have it, guys. That is a look at the Personas Fader Port 8 production controller. It is, of course, from our friends at Personas. Again, I did pair this up today with a PC Audio Labs Pro Audio laptop, and you can find our Pro Audio laptops at PCAudioLabs.com, as well as the line of uh, specialized PCs that we make for Personas hardware and software. That's the PSC series. 
We've just updated that and you can find that also at PCAudioLabs.com and on the Personas website in their web store as well. If you want to get your hands on the Fader Port 8, you can get it at PC Audio Labs. You can also get it from, of course, our friends at Personas. If you guys have questions, comments, if I missed anything, you want to know more about the Fader Port, anything like that, feel free to find us on your favorite social media network, get in touch with me in the comments section on this video, email me, give us a call. We're here to help you to tame your technology, get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software because that's what we do best here at Obedia and PC Audio Labs. As always, everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia and PC Audio Labs. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, happy music making to you and take care. Today's pro audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your pro audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.